talk to you guys this week, continuing in Lamentations 3, verses 22 and 23. And so, here are the verses. The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, says my soul. Therefore, I will hope in him. And so I just want to pray one more time. I know we already prayed, but I just want to pray over these verses and pray over this message. So if you'll bow your head. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for this day, God. We thank you so much for the beautiful weather that has been coming since the awkward snow that came on Tuesday. Um, we thank you so much for the opportunity to be able to meet here in a public school and just talk about your love and talk about your mercy and how it's so much greater and so much better than anything here on earth, God. I pray for this message, Lord, and I just pray that you reach out to every single student in this classroom and you give them something to carry away from today, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, in this first part of the verse, it says that God's love is not a finite thing. The steadfast love of the Lord will never cease. Um, his love will endure forever. And this made me think of Psalm 136, which basically is a long line. And every other line, it says, God's love endures forever. God's love endures forever. It just says a whole bunch of times. So if that is not enough to be like, oh, it's true, it says it again here. It says it over and over again that God's love will never cease. And it is so amazing and so great. He loves us so much also that his mercy has never come to an end. And um, I just wanted to clarify really fast on the word mercy because I know it's a term used a lot in church. And I just wanted to give a nice definition to just keep us all on the same page. But mercy is basically just not getting what we do deserve. And what we do deserve is a life in separation with God because of our sins. But through the God, through the mercy of God, we can live a life with in communication with Jesus and with God. Also, one more thing for this verse, I just wanted to say, like, God is love. It says it in 1 John 4:16. So we have come to know and to believe that the love God has for us. God is love, and whoever abides in love abides in God, and God abides in him. So this kind of makes sense because if it's saying that love never ceases and God is love, it just kind of, God doesn't end, so love won't end either. And so the next verse is, they are new every morning, great is your faithfulness. Um, so as I was writing this message, I saw the word new, and I, that made me think. I wanted to say, well, how would I define new? So what does new mean? I'm going to kind of open that up to you guys so you guys have a good, good definition of the word new. Sorry? That's new. New stuff is good. New stuff is good, yes. Does anyone else have a definition of new or anything? Yeah. It's fresh. Fresh? <laughs> Yo. <laughs> yeah. Trying something different. Trying something different, yeah. Pure. Pure, yes. So, I took it to Google as one would, and I came across Merriam Webster. That's right, y'all the dictionary and it defined new as having recently come into existence which i thought was really cool recently coming into existence mean that it wasn't there before or the one that i personally like because you know how there's like always a few this one just really stuck out to me made or become fresh <laughs> so thank you olivia that's amazing you're welcome and i just whenever i think of fresh i think of clean and just unmarked and just pure and that's such a great way to describe God's mercy. It's kind of like soap, which that, like, I don't know, that just kind of makes me think of clean and all that good stuff. So the mercy that we receive isn't just infinite, it's new every day. But not just every day, every single moment, his mercies are new. We don't have to worry about God's mercy just quitting on us and being like, well, it's all gone, I used it all up. That's just not what happens. His mercies never come to an end. They're new. They're fresh every single day. But with this, we can't take this unending mercy for granted. Because I feel like in my life, I can almost live a life of, oh, I'm going to do this right now, and I'm going to ask for forgiveness later. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm just going to make myself look really good or make myself feel good right now. 
and later I'm going to ask for forgiveness. That's taking the verse kind of out of context and putting it on yourself and almost using it as self-glorification and using it as an excuse to do whatever you want. This reminded me of Romans 6, 1 through 2. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live in it any longer? When we are saved, we have the Holy Spirit as our conscience. And this should help us kind of make decisions whether or not we want to go on this wide path that everyone goes on. It seems easy. It's easy street here on the wide path. You can just stroll down it, and it's nice. But there's also the narrow path. The path that's a little bit harder, it seems like it's more work. But in the end, the rewards that come from the narrow path are so much greater than anything that could be on this wide path. So when we have this conscience to make the decision between the two paths, the Holy Spirit should want to push us in this direction to glorify God instead of pushing us on this direction of doing things for ourselves. But, so now you're just thinking like, all right, Kennedy, I understand. Don't do things on purpose, but we're human. We mess up. And that's true. We do mess up. It's literally just the way things is. The way things are. <laughs> We have flesh, and our flesh wants to do things of the world. But, like, we, sorry. <laughs> our flesh wants to do things of the world. It's just, it's the way things have been since Genesis, since Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden when they took the apple. That's just, it's human nature. We are human. But there is no sin that is too great that's going to separate us, separate us from God. That's going to drive a wedge into our relationship so big that we're not going to be able to make it back. God knows exactly when, where, and how we are going to disobey him and turn our backs toward him. And even though he knows all of that, he still sent Jesus down to die on the cross for our sins. That's amazing. Like, God's character is just so good. And we don't deserve any of it. And that's coming back to that mercy. We don't deserve it. In Ephesians 1 7, I thought it gave a very nice description of God's character. He is so rich in kindness and grace that he purchased our freedom with the blood of his son and forgave our sins. Jesus overthrew the power that sin had on our lives by sending Jesus down to die on the cross so that we don't have to live a life separated, so that we don't have to live in eternity without God. That's just, I don't know. For me, just reading that and living that, it's amazing. It really is. Being intentional with your actions to follow God and receive this mercy that he's given us through sending his son to die on the cross is one of the most beautiful things. So now for the second part of this verse, great is your faithfulness. God is faithful to what he says. It says it right here. Like It's just very plain and simple. Sometimes the Bible can be almost so simple but also so complex in the same way that I'm about to take this and go even more in depth in it. So that's why we need to understand why God's promises, like what they are to us, why they're important by reading the Bible and understanding them because God isn't gonna lie. He's not gonna cheat us. He's not gonna try and trick us out, try and like break our ankles. That's not God's character. <laughs> that's not what he's trying to do. Because as I said earlier, He's a kind God. He loves us. He has grace that he's giving to us, and it's abounding. His love and his mercy, boom, love, boom, mercy, <laughs> are so great. So it's important to know that God will stay faithful, especially for this section of verses here, because without his love and without his mercy, there is no way for us to have a relationship. And I can't even imagine what things would be like if there was just no opportunity there. Because the wages of sin are death. It says it in Romans 6.23. But you know it's greater than sin. His love is greater. His mercies are greater. God is greater than the sins that we face and the things and the trials that we go through. We deserve an eternity in hell separation. Separated. But we receive God's mercy and an opportunity to have this relationship with him. An opportunity to live a life that doesn't glorify ourselves, but glorifies someone in such a higher character and such a higher being. 
So that is basically this whole verse right here. And I'm just going to pray us out and we are going to